Hello everybody, welcome to Bops and Bangers. We're back as always. I am Kelsey. And I'm Ashley. And this is another new week, another freshie of music. Oh yes. And the bops just keep on bopping. The oh bangers are bangering. That okay. sounds weird. They're banging. They're banging. <laughs> Where am I? Bangering. Bangering. <laughs> and we're super excited to be sitting here. Um, at Poor Ash has been traveling nonstop, so we get to record basically whenever she's alive because yeah, poor poor girl. I know. Home stretch. Home stretch. Like I was telling you, I was just saying that now I'm kind of. Now we're kind of on the... The fun side of things. Yeah. The I Uber mean, it's all been fun, fun, except for last weekend. But yeah. it's been kind of... It was still fun to see family and everything. Yeah. But yeah, you know, making my way through. Making our way downtown. downtown long and fast. fast. She needs to stay home because she's sleepy. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> I know. I miss like doing things in San Diego. I could not tell you what's happening in San Diego. A lot. we leave. A lot of things. There's a lot of things. I know. And it's time. It's time to start doing the dance thing. It is. It's so cool because we've recently made friends with an incredible um, company down here called Color House. Um, As I choke on my own spit because I'm not human. Um, (laughs) Or you are human. Or I am. And I just don't know how to function like one. Um... Color House is an incredible group of people started by our new bestie. His name is Charlie. And it's really just like a creative environment. Um, yeah. They do a lot of really cool events on campuses, on school campuses. So SDSU had a really, really fun one. It was like a fashion show, right? Yeah, Rach? Color Fest with yeah. a K. Fest. They with had a, a drag show and a fashion show <gasps> and then a bunch of vendors like for thrifting for students yes. and then like tote bags, Chipotle. They're trying to expand it to new campuses. It's a creative collective. Yeah. Check it's it so out. It's so cool. Yeah. There, It's just a really um, fun environment that we've been waiting for Mm -hmm. something in San Diego to pop up especially for the um, students because SDSU is huge we have yes you know big big college campuses that I feel like get really left out of the conversation Uh of like UC schools too and everything like that and it's just they're yeah. so cool. I feel like it's needed here in San Diego mm-hmm. for like all these college sh- kids to start going out yeah. and like making their way out on the town. And and <laughs> in a creative manner yes. because I think there's a lot for like sports down here. There's a lot of yes. outdoor activities, but the creatives needed something. Need a space. They need a space. They deserved it. We deserve it. Mm-hmm. So check out Color House. Yeah. I know if I was in college, this would have been like my fucking jam. Yeah. Oh, it would my have been God. so cool. I so. would have been like music treasurer or something. You know, I would have yes. been like, make me part of this. Mm-hmm. Here's their Instagram. Bloop, 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 bloop. Uh, so <laughs> really fun. Check them out. Um, we're going to be talking about them a lot more in the upcoming months because we're doing some really fun partnering with them. Yeah. So I'm really excited. Excited. Um, but let's, as always, dive into some hot topics some hot takes hot takes ashley's got some ticky talks for us to watch i do i have a couple i can't wait we can't wait but we wanted to have a conversation before we jump into that just really quickly um we were sitting here kind of talking about you know ideas that we might have um and we were talking about the the inability nowadays to have a medium ground so rachel (laughs) rachel and i were uh taught what were we just taught my brain Um, met gala met gala and how a lot of people aren't attending and in entertainment right now it's like you're either huge or you're not everything's open for criticism how are we feeling yeah everything's like a pass fail kind of system it is and people are super harsh good luck to you if you have like a lot of influence people do not give you any no grace no like it's very aggressive yeah which is so funny because people forget that we're all human and we all are flawed and make mistakes yeah I, like every day yeah but but <laughs> also me. i feel like people are like so mad at people with influence and yeah i get it people with money people who have that influence can be a little showy okay can but can be aggressive i but... think that this really started during covid yes because if wealth wasn't like you didn't really think about people with money until Mm -hmm. like you were trapped in your studio apartment (laughs) and couldn't leave your house yeah and you saw like wealthy people like still doing shit still like hanging out at their house that had like a pool and like 
Well, Kim Kardashian who flew to a deserted island essentially yes. to like, have it her really birthday. was like, yeah. oh wow, I don't have any money and yeah. you get like angry. Like yeah. a lot of anger I think yeah. came up. During that, like, I know when even, like, award shows started again, and I, like, have always loved award shows, I was like, I'm not fucking watching that. Yeah, same. Like, it was, like, annoying. It was. I was like, this is fucking stupid. Like, these privileged assholes get to do whatever they want, and I just had, like, the worst year of my life, like, sitting in my studio apartment. Exactly. Because I think the negativity, just, the online, um horde yes. of people were, were like, this is bad now. And you're like, you know what? This does suck. Well, it did suck. It did suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. coming, like, I had zero space. You couldn't yeah. even go outside for a while or you felt awkward. Like, there was nowhere to go where you, as, like, a person that had zero influence, were being judged. Yeah. So, you like... You were crisscrossing streets to avoid people. You know, we were talking, we're talking about de-influencing now on platforms. But then I was on TikTok yesterday and I saw there's that whole Tarte Island thing happening right now. Did you see anything about that? So, Tarte, yeah. the makeup company, which mm. I love Tarte. I love Tarte. Shape Tape. Thank yes. you for saving my under bags, under eye bags. Yep. Um, but they basically rented out Prince's, like, villa oh. in Turks and Caicos and invited a shit ton of influencers influential influencers like remy bader was there Mm -hmm. um those two sister twins yes k bay K Bay. some of my absolute some of my absolute um, uh, emily what's her butt now yes what i love it was that it was this trip around was um a whole plethora of different creators and different genres of creators like just funny girls were there yeah don't not necessarily make up girl yes but it was very silly girls just some silly girls i haven't seen any negativity surrounding that because oh. back i mean we t- we've talked about revolve at coachella being yeah. a which massive apparently shit like show. wasn't a really a thing this year which last year because everyone was like this is fucking stupid these yes, people aren't there it's for embarrassing. the music yeah, yeah and now it's almost like that's why i think people are saying no to the met gala is it's almost like they know people will like you'll feel feel embarrassed for going because of the inevitable shit show that you're gonna get online which kind of sucks that does suck because i mean the met gal is like a huge uh very cool thing to be a part like yeah if you are there if your fashion's there like all that stuff like good for you yeah truly i agree it's like people work their whole life that's like their one dream and i don't think we think about that i think we're just like well they're famous and they have so much money like "Mm, cool yeah but it's like some of these people have been working for years upon years, and this is like maybe their dream come like true. Like Super Bowl. And we're like, fuck you. You yeah. know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not yeah. necessarily fair. And I feel that w- I even do this, I even do this, where I'm only on one side of the fence. Yeah. Where even I can't be in the middle anymore. And I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like not being able to see both sides of the story. I'm always a middle rider. People hate me for that. But I'm like... You're too good at it. No, but I really am have a hard time not seeing another person's perspective. So, like, yeah. someone comes into it, and they are like, well, I feel this way. And it's like, okay, well, you feel that way because you have had these experiences in your life. Yeah. I'm never, like, I am obviously hard on some things, yes. but it's, it's... But I think that's why I go to you so much when I have, like, problems I need to work out. It's oh, because nice. I'm like, Ashley's going to be my voice of reason, mm-hmm. always. Oh, thank you. Like, mm-hmm. you're always going to be super excited, but you're like, okay, but what about? Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. like, you and, you and Gabe, too. Like, both of you just have this very good even path like you're very much you stay where you like your brain just works in both worlds oh and mine will just go to the extreme because (laughs) leo (laughs) (laughs) no but like i I mean i talk about that 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 and therapy all the time is i'm either on one end of the spectrum or the other end and finding middle ground for me is so hard so i like to surround myself with people who do have that middle ground because I'll listen to you and be like, oh, fuck, you're right. Yeah. So I do oh, always nice. take your um, your uh, uh, opinion oh, into account you. for everything. Thanks. I'm like, thanks. Ashley's thanks. so smart. Oh, that was just the bestie <laughs> moment that you just oh, witnessed. That was, you, a, you know? Thanks. Yeah, it's difficult for people to do. It is. And I think, like, with the 2020 election yeah. and now, like, with politics being, like, a social media scene yeah. it's so fucking weird it's like weird. i don't want to know like i just want you to make good decisions <laughs> yeah. for the country i don't yeah. really care about like 
any fun memes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like love that. a Bernie meme, but like, can we fix the country? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just like, yeah. There's like, more is this what things. we're doing on social media? Yeah. It's yeah. very strange. Yeah. And it's just a weird, it is a weird time in regards to that. And I think that the pandemic definitely influenced like, oh, people aren't going to that Same. gala because it's, there's just going to be shit on. There's just the loss of perspective for both sides. Yeah. Like people going and flaunting that. Yeah. Which sometimes, yeah, you deserve it. Like you're there. That's awesome. Yeah. But then also like. There's, there's people, people take that, it to the extreme. Yeah. Kim Kardashian. All the Kardashians. I, I mean, truly though, they do. They do. And they don't give a fuck. And good for good on them, you know. Yeah. They're pretty much at this point where they're like, "Fuck you all! I'm gonna do what yeah, I'm we doing." We have a ton of money, and they, yeah, we're like, just gonna go for it, which is ballsy, <laughs> ballsy. But I, I think it's an interesting conversation and one that, like, I'm sure will come up again throughout our podcasting life because oh, yeah. it is it, it's interesting to see where we go as a as social commenters on things Mm -hmm. because everyone has access to do that now it's kind of terrifying though if you have influence i'm terrified daily because i was yeah we and we are like like tiny 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 because if you fuck up just a little bit just a little bit goodbye yeah like you are going to be dragged dragged that just happened to someone oh man i i mean it keeps happening to people i 100 back it if they're shitty as Fuck yeah, and like they, yeah, they it's deserve like, it. Yeah, but if you like, like mishap a little bit, oh and then you're like, I'm so sorry, and then people like just keep going, and then they like yeah. people just forget that the person that fucked up is still human, and people grow. Yeah, I think that's what we forget too is we're expecting people who you know, 20 years ago when our climate, our social climate was so different. And that's no excuse to be like, oh, you know, racist remember. or an asshole or, you know, whatever it may be. But I think there's something to be said of like, people are allowed to grow. People are allowed to change. People are allowed to learn. And we really don't allow um, a lot of celebrities to do that. Okay. So I'm reading, I'm almost done reading a book. What? <laughs> Who is wow. she? I'm I know. so proud of it's you. It's been really difficult. I've been reading it for like a year now, it's but I'm fine. almost done. It's fine. The book that actually shout out Lisette got us for oh our thing. Oh my god, yes. The Professional Troublemaker. Okay. Um, the Fear Fighter Manual. It's by Lou. Is this why you're so strong? It's right by now? Luvi. I think that's how you say her okay. name. Luvi Ajia Aji. Ooh, that sounds fun. Aja- I need to read this afterwards. How do you say that? Um, Ajayi. Ajayi Jones? Yeah. Yeah. Luvi Ajayi Jones. Um, she talks about in there because it's all about like facing your fears and go after it. And I'm like, God, I really need. No in my wonder life. you've shot your shot so much recently. Oh no, this is I like, just started. Oh. <laughs> I'm already feeling that because of you. Okay, You're like, shoot okay, so your okay, shot. Okay, I'm like, okay, okay, I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> you know, I'm in my 30s. Maybe yeah. it's just coming around. Yeah, I think so. barely, barely. But she was talking about how she made a mistake and like tweeted something about a musician actually that was performing at Aretha Franklin's tribute okay and she was like where did they find this artist like how to dust the cobwebs off something like that uh. and everyone started attacking her um because she i believe she is from nigeria but okay. then she came over to the u.s okay and yeah was like making just her didn't... way here yeah so she, so they were like giving her shit like you don't even like something stupid like that oh, no. but then she like tweeted back at someone that was talking shit Ooh. angrily Ooh. And then, like, her credibility was going down the hill. Like, all of a sudden, the snowball that she's talking about, how, like, people just aren't great, like, don't give you grace. But, like, she talks about how, like, all she needed to do was say, like, I'm sorry, I messed up. Yes, And then it's about her, like, overcoming that situation where, like, she went a full year of, like, going radio silent. And she was just, like, terrified to speak because you kind of, like, lose... That confidence that you once had yeah. because like everyone's telling you that you... They're waiting for you to fuck up again. Yeah. Oh. Terrifying. So it's very interesting. Great book. I'm obsessed. Oh, yeah. Professional Troublemaker. Definitely read um, it. She's a queen and I'm obsessed. <sighs> but yeah, it's just a very intense... Yes. Um, yeah. It's I, a very scary thing. But also like if you don't take those chances in some ways, like you're really not... 
Like, you have to yeah. just learn from the mistakes. I, yeah. And if you're truly a good person, I think that you come out on the other side and yes. you'll be okay. Yes. But it's just that intense moment of, and there like, are some people who, failure. There are some people whose, like, apologies are so, like, too crafted that you're like, a PR company wrote that. Yeah. And it's like, come or on. Or some people still don't apologize. Like, or the baby or, or just, Chris Brown. Yeah, or they just, like, yeah. let like, it disappear off. into... Yeah, yeah, they try and just ignore yeah. it. That's fucked up. Yeah. But if you're sitting there trying to apologize, trying to be like, I'm an idiot. Yeah. yeah. Like, that that takes so much more strength... Oh, my gosh. ...to do 100%. than just stay radio silent. Yeah. You know? Know? And totally. I agree. Like even sometimes my brain, like because of you know, trauma, mental, whatever, I like it takes me a second to formulate words. Yeah. Out of my brain. Yes. And sometimes I just say the wrong word, and I'm like, "Fuck, I'm gonna be yeah, I'm just so bad murdered with words. for that." <laughs> I'm so murdered. bad with words. I'm so much better with writing. Which is so funny that we have a podcast. It's fine. <laughs> I know, because we're fine. both just like, we are horrible it's, with words. We're horrible. Going back to the Met Gala yeah. and stuff like that, where it's like, no one has a medium ground. It's kind of like, I think we should still celebrate those mediums. I do too. And like, a, a lot of people that have a lot of money worked their fucking ass off for it. And even if you're at the Met Gala, like, I'm in leggings. Like, that's yeah. a lot of work. So, it is art what they wear. Yes. You know, and I think we really have to start looking at, you know, I understand Nepo babies. I understand the the anger surrounding generational wealth. Yes. Um, as someone who is... The, the hot topic in it America. It is. And as someone who's the, the receiver of generational wealth, like I'm the luckiest human being alive. But I still work hard to do, like, I'm building a business for myself. Yeah. I'm not relying. Oh, look at that. Thank you. I'm not relying on, you know, my family to project me into stardom. Yeah. And I feel like just because I'm a lucky human being, I feel like people look at those types of people and are like, well, fuck you instantly. And it's like, but I'm a good person. Yeah. You know? And that honestly just stems from, like, the way that they're feeling about themselves. I know. And it sucks because it's not something like I... You can't ever change it. I can't change it. No. And so I think when we look at people who go to these big award shows, the Grammys, yes. the Oscars, the Emmy, just anything that celebrates art, essentially, we get a little angry. Yeah. And I don't understand like why we're such in a hater phase of life. Rachel. Hater phase. Yeah. Well, that's different though. <laughs> I'm still like a, a kind human being to my core. That's what I'm if saying. If you all want to provoke the hater in me, that's another story, you know? <laughs> oh, it's different. Oh, oh, oh. Provoke the hater in me. I like that. Yeah. Don't provoke that's it. That's on y'all. Don't provoke it. I'm just, don't poke the bear. Yeah, don't yeah. poke it. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. Oh, I say this oh. to everybody. I say this to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> I hope Milan makes that a clip. Oh, Milan's absolutely making <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Just me just doing the, yeah, yeah. Uh, should we watch some Tiki Talks? Oh, yeah. yeah. This one's kind of long, but this one's kind of funny because I could talk about. Okay. Which one do we want to do first? This one? Do the crossed one first. Okay. Rage. This was Billy's first festival. My husband Whoa. was there. At the end of this, I've put the video he took at this I, festival of Ocean Eyes like, when only 10 people like were watching. 20, like 16 in like the summer I believe or something I don't even remember it was a, it was a while ago yeah um before any of this really like we had belly ache and like ocean eyes and seafood under out um there was like this festival called crossed and I was supposed to play at like 12 p.m right where's this in in California in like San Diego or something right and um I remember like there was I believe there was eight people standing on the grass it was like, it could have been like thousands, you know, but it was like eight people because I was nobody. And I remember like two girls were only singing the lines of the chorus to Ocean Eyes, yeah. nothing else. But I had never experienced anything like that. And I almost cried <laughs> from two girls singing only the chorus from a, one song from my whole set out of eight people on a big, huge field. Um, I've been watching for some time.
Oh, oh wow. Oh, okay. okay. So Tell I me. want to say about this because I was at that CrossFest. Whoa! <laughs> so this is spring of 2017. Wow. So it's my 27th birthday. And I swear I was there for that. But the thing is, this year when I went, yes. I was so fucked up. Yes. <laughs> so you just have no recollection. I just don't have a video of it. This is the year that oh. Duke Dumont played. Did you search in your... I just... I was searching earlier. Oh. Like, Duke Dumont was playing, and I was so amped for that. Snake Hips played. Bob Moses oh, played. Like, dude. it was such a good lineup. And I swear to God, I was there for her set. Yeah. But I cannot... I usually take videos of everyone, but I was so drunk. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. I was, like, <laughs> very, very, very drunk. But I that was, like, early brilliant. in the day. But no... We would like power drink before we even yes. got in the festival. Yes. Like that was the vodka out of water ball days. And I was already 27. The so how cool. water balls. Yeah. But anyways, I thought that I saw that and I was like, oh my God, I, was, I know I was fucking there for that. That is so funny though, because I feel like Billy then versus Billy now is totally, like Ocean Eyes doesn't even seem a part of her, her discography yeah. right. anymore. But yeah. that first album when that came out, like, it, it's life changing, like that. Oh like, God, that yeah. just like set her. Yeah. To be fair, Ocean Eyes being remixed by Astronomy. Oh yeah, that is one. the superior version wow. of that song. I do love that song oh, a lot. That's God. A, such a I good am one. So fully obsessed. Yeah. So That's I saw crazy. that. And I was like, I was there for that. It's crazy. Um, I think she came back to Crossfest later on, though. I think, but I don't know. that had, if she didn't, then I know for a fact I saw her at yeah. Crossfest. Yeah. But. That's- That's just so weird to be like, oh, yeah, I saw them before they absolutely blew Blew up. up. That's the best feeling. Yeah, it is. You're like, I did it. She fucking blew up. Oh, my God. Billy, my queen. Oh, also, I really love her blue hair in that video. Oh, I know. The OG Billy hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's the OG Billy right there. Ocean eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Have well, you guys no, seen her live yet? When she does that interview, I don't, I think that that was a recent interview. Oh, yeah, because she's blonde in the video. Yeah. Oh, Billy. No, that. It does. Is her hair that? Yeah. Her, her hair was blonde. blue in the interview and blonde when she was singing. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't have know. Have you guys seen her live, though? Uh, besides no. besides that? Um, no. I, oh, yes. Yes, I have. I saw her at ACL like two years ago. She's fucking amazing. I can imagine that. I'm just, I don't like huge um, arena shows. When I saw her, Justin Bieber and Haley were right in front of me. Oh, my God. I was at the barricade, like, for her. Oh, my God. Yeah. Then passed out for her last year at Coachella. So. Oh, yes. I'm a ride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot you about that. Right. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I saw her ACL. Yeah. I'm jealous. But I was way back, because I was like, I'm not going up in that. Mm-hmm. I'd I'm be like, up. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> Duh. I always want to like creep around during that part, like (laughs) (laughs) creep (laughs) in. All right, ready? Yes. Number two. Oh God, yes. Hey, don't write yourself off yet. I'm already crying. It's only in your head you feel left out or look down on. Try your best. Try everything you can. <laughs> don't you worry what they tell themselves when you're away. It just takes some time, little girl. You're in the middle of the ride. Everything, everything will be just fine. Ah. Uh. Uh. Wow, he ate. Well, wait. So, like, the devastate. premise of that video is yeah. like lyrics you didn't know like could hit, hit, hit that, that hard. hard, and those lyrics hit Ooh. hard. The second he went, "Hey," I was like, <laughs> oh. "Tears, <laughs> tears." I know. Hi. I know. Just dying. I've seen um, people start to do this with like old pop punk things, and oh, I'm like, "Oh yeah, just." Murder me. That's why I was so <laughs> emotional. They yeah. really like cut deep they with those. They do videos. cut oh, deep. It's like, oh my god, these are deep. As Imagine hell. if someone did that to like um, Hawthorne Heights. Oh my god, <laughs> Darn. wait, should we? Yes. <laughs> my heart is in Ohio. Yeah. So cut, cut my, my wrists, wrists and black, black my eyes. eyes. Cut my wrists. <laughs> and black my eyes. You should do a video. Thank you. I should. I can't sing like that beautiful. Oh my god! My god, I know. sir. Buttery. I Amazing. love that though because truly, I feel like pop punk. Like, like it was about the lyrics a little bit, but it was really just about, about the energy. Yeah, the energy. And so to now sit back and be like, actually, that is really deep. The second that man said, "Hey, I was in." 
I was and no, it's almost like The lyrics are like he's talking to his daughter yes. or something. And I'm like, this is so hey. emotional. Like, <laughs> so Don't hurt. write yourself off yet. <laughs> it's only in your head. I you know. feel left out. <laughs> Shit hits. Shit hits. <laughs> Ashley's TikTok corner. Beautiful. Beautiful as always. Uh, Super excited. This week we have another incredible podcast feature song for y'all. And um, this is really up Rachel's alley. Well, it's really up all All of our alleys. alleys. (laughs) But truly, Rachel was grooving to this when I just played it for her. And with with a good with with good uh, intentions as well because this is Brie Fiji with her single Savior. It came out in January, so we're super happy to have her. Mm-hmm. Chicago, which I feel like we don't have a lot of Chicago Chicagoans Chicagoans Chicagoans. I don't know. How do you say it, guys? Chicago no Chicago Chicagoans Chicagoans. We really, really love this song because it fuses pop, hip hop, R and B into this beautiful, beautiful blend. Uh, Bree's voice is absolutely stunning on it. Uh, she grew up uh, as an explorative listener, which I think I'm gonna steal that phrase. Yes, because I feel like that is us. That is us. We did grow up l- like listening to everything we could get our hands on. So yep. we're with you, Bree. Um, and already having a love for music as a kid, Brie was encouraged to make music for her middle school, uh, music teacher, oh, which I love that. we love when a teacher's like, this is your calling. Yes. Because That's I, so sweet. It's so important it's so that we sweet. have teachers that do, do that. that. Yes. Um, because look at her now. Oh my gosh. You're just fixing my entire life today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That was beautiful. Uh, the song was uh, inspired by a period of her life when her best friend and her were heavily codependent on one another, mm. which... Been there. Been there, done that. <laughs> um, and her friend was going through severe depression, <laughs> family issues, and homesickness. And Brie was wanting to find a way to solve all of her problems because she loved her so much, which is like, that's what I would that's do so for sweet. you, yeah. you know? And um, she was inspired to write this song because of that, and she threw in this... Uh, beat together in Garage Band and made this in her bedroom. Damn. And it, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's a bop. It's, it just sounds like it's a well produced song. Yeah. So, like, Brie, my crushing girl, it. crushing it. Uh, so, this is Brie Fiji with her single Savior. Go check her out. She has a few new songs out, and we just can't wait to see where she goes from this. So, have, an, have a great time listening. Yay. Enjoy. We'll be right back. When you don't want to feel. Death can seem like a dream, but seeing death, really seeing it, makes dreaming about it fucking ridiculous. I strike 12 midnight, it's the only thing on my mind, don't think I'm gonna get it right, right, get it right.
shoes, now that's like feet. Zoom in quick, get a close up. You feel attack, push your guard up. Schmiggy break. Just kidding. No schmiggies sh- no here. No schmiggies. Uh, let's let's just deep dive into that music. Deep dive. Uh, I think you went last first last I did. week. I so definitely, I'll, did I'll help. I'll, mm, I will hop on first. This is an EP that I immediately slacked to the group. We love a group slack. Uh, and this is K Young with. Uh, their EP, their EP titled "We Meet at Last," which I love that. Yeah, we meet at we last. We meet at last. Um, K is a, and also never heard of K before until this, and I feel like I made a boo boo. Oops, you know, <sighs> should have been listening because <laughs> she has that um, soulful urgency of an Amy Winehouse song. Mm. With a, a very specific warmth, like almost Addy Oasis-y uh, in her vocals that feels just good. Uh, born in South London uh, to a very musical family, Kay taught herself how to play the drums, which wow, that is an instrument that is so hard to teach yourself and yes. be good at. And then she jumped into audio production. So she essentially can do it all. Wow. Which we love a self-produced, self, if, what do you call it? Self-reliant. Self-made. Self-made. Self-reliant girl. Um, she is really pushing the boundaries of Neo Soul in a beautiful way, incorporating these huge brass sections, which oh, we love we a brass, love a brass section. section. Mm-hmm. Um, gospel choirs and almost this like alt-rock R&B that is like kind of coming about. It is. It's it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing, and I'm here for more it. More guitars. More guitars, um, blended with a socio political kind of conversation in her lyrics. So very much taking neo soul into almost like a, a political way, mm-hmm. but um, not in a in a ranty. You know, oh, like some yeah. some socio political like album. Just bringing it up. Just, yeah. Just just men- touching cash on it. mentioning <laughs> a shit ton of racism. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I am totally ready for a full album from Kay. She does also have a song on this EP that has Ego LMA in it. Who... Obsessed. We are obsessed with. And the song bops. My favorite songs off of this are The Way You Look At Me and Woe Is Me. I'm excited to listen. It's on my list. You're gonna love it. By the way, the recommendations you gave last week, I think I listened to all of them. Top tier. Oh, top tier. You have been just... In it <laughs> with the good Rex, so thank you. You're welcome. Everyone thank hear you. that? Everyone hear <laughs> that? Listen to them. Listen to them. I promise they're good. Um, kind of along the same lines, I oh, feel like. We're in that mood. We're in that yeah. mood, yeah. Along the same lines, 
Uh, I couldn't not talk about yes Joy oh, a lot of Coon Queen and her new album or, or their new album Proof of Life. Um, I'm obsessed. Yes, it is so good. Oh. Joy's back, baby. Joy's. You said in our text group, right? Yes, that you and no one to responded. It? So. I'm, so sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, was, I, was I'm so I read it and then I went to go listen immediately. Uh, I did. I'm just I was playing video games, killing zombies. I get it. To I be fair, it. I don't think anyone responds to me either. Usually, that's not true. Ooh, battle royale. Well, we can go. Sometimes take a it's look. true. We yeah, have we true. have the receipts. Yeah. We can't say. Anything I feel like we text when that. we're all busy. Like do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We just do a mind thing. Like, yeah, it's all. It's, it's, okay always, a, it's a mind dump. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> so and we see each other a lot. So yeah. it's like I'll talk to you. I'll when end I see up you. telling them anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's been about two years since their last album release. Two. Yeah, 2021. Last year. 2021. In defense of my own happiness. And by the way, that was my top album it was. of 2021. So just saying. That was like really at the beginning of Girl. Yeah. That's weird. So to preface, this album had kind of big shoes to fill. Big. Because I was obsessed with that. Yes. Kind of touched on the same, like, she bar- very much goes into um, a little sociopolitical. Oh, cool. Vibes, conversation yes yeah but then isn't too heavy about yes, it yes it's just kind of like sprinkling it in yes there. like yes. we gotta fix this y'all yeah remember yeah remember <laughs> yeah. yeah understand this yeah yeah it's not like let me just like beat yes. this into you it's yes. like this still happens yeah <laughs> and, and it's just because i think that it is it's oh in it's happening in their life it's something they write yeah about. and i think yeah. it should just be general like conversation yes 100 percent. so um she did not disappoint. Thank God. Very much just an incredible album. Um, it's packed with collabs, first off. Noah Kahan, Mount wow. Joy, Manchester Orchestra, Chris Stapleton, Maxo Cream. That's Whoa, crazy. Maxo Cream. Yeah, like literally, I mean, that's a lot of people already off the bat. Like, But also different genres for everyone. Yes, exactly. Wow. Which is so, so cool. Um, I love how lyrically you can tell that Joy has gone through self-growth, self-love, and is a little more positive since her last album. Okay. But she keeps the same sound, but she's adding like a little more sass. Ooh. And when I mean that, I mean like more guitars. It's definitely going yes. in like a rockier vibes yeah. direction, kind of like what you're saying yeah. with Kay. And it's also kind of like got a little gospel vibes. There's like, you can hear a little faint choir in the background of some songs. And I'm like, <laughs> I, love I love this. Um, growing up as a child of Nigerian immigrants, queer and raised in the church, she's definitely no stranger Ooh. to how things can be weaponized against her. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I think that that influences a lot of her music. She says, my only intention is to make music to help myself process everyday life and to help other people process everyday life and she just does that like 100 percent. so she amazing. did it back in 2021 yeah you know um the new york times article written about them is was titled therapeutic folk pop and i was like that is, that is your genre <laughs> i know we finally have nailed oh down God. therapeutic <laughs> folk pop <laughs> Thank you, New York Times. You came up with a new genre that perfectly <laughs> describes Ashley. It does. It Holy really does. Holy shit. So, incredible. My favorite tracks, The Hard Way, Friends, and We're All Gonna Die. Oh, my God. So, is this a fiver? It's a fiver. It's a fiver, but then another one on my list is a fiver fiver, and I'm like... Fiver fiver. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Oh, yeah. The so, Uber it's kind of like, oh. Uh, I know. I definitely... I feel like I liked hearing joy's original album yes and it was just so it just fit, fit like it just my brain was like yes yeah yeah this one's also amazing i like that um she's going like a little bit more of a rockier vibe yeah it's kind of fun yeah and it's different and you yeah. can tell like sh- she's trying to branch out yeah she wants to like hit all genres i think is where she's going gotcha I think there's like a Bruce Springsteen, like she Ooh. mentioned that, like she's kind of, I think Ooh. she's trying to get a little rockier. A little Brucey? Yeah. A little Lucy Brucey? <laughs> Lucy Brucey. <laughs> yeah. That's a little Lucy Brucey. Joy. Yeah. I'm just going Lucy Brucey. But I it's incredible. It. I'm obsessed. I'm Joy, so I love you so much. Yeah. And just skyrocketed to fame, truly. Truly. And the best way is possible. And to work with such cool collaborative artists yeah. means that, that they love her, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? The last album was yeah. just incredible. I love... Yeah, yeah, it was. And 
Um, she goes by she, they pronouns. Okay. That's. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Queer. We love a queer woman in, in therapeutic folk pop. 100%. <laughs> She's getting all Lucy Brucey. I love it. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Just funny. Because you're like, she, they. And then <laughs> Kelsey's like, and I love that. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> and I love that. I love that. <laughs> all right. We're I'm, super, <laughs> I'm super excited to move on to my next uh, recommendation, which is actually someone you've seen many a time on our Instagram page, if you follow us. And um, this is Best Friend. They did a Meet Your Next Favorite Artist series with us, which was hella chaotic in the best oh way possible. It was the best. Editing it was my favorite thing in the world because they just brought me so much joy. But this is um, their EP that finally came out called Places I've so Left. Good. It is... I don't give EPs five, guys. Oh, but it wow. Is, it is a 4.99. Like, heart-wrenching. Heart-wrenching. These are two literal best friends, um, long-distance besties. Aww. So something you and I can relate to yes. um, for many years. Um, their name, they're from Vancouver. Can, can, Canadian, eh? We love y'all. We Canadian love y'all. <laughs> um, this is uh, Stacy and Kaylin, and two best friends, two long-distance besties. And they make this beautifully dramatic bedroom indie rock. Oh, in your jam. Oh my jam. Yeah. Oh my jam. Therapeutic as balls in like the devastate me kind of way. <laughs> um, Stacy's got this very deep alto voice, which as a deep alto singer, like I always appreciate. It's like that's why I think I love Billie Eilish so much. Yeah. It's because she's got such a deep voice. Yes. And I think that's so sexy because I feel like when I was growing up, being an alto was like so fucking everyone wants yeah. to be the soprano yep. because you get to be girly. Yep. Yeah. And being an alto is yep. not girly. It's yep. being a tomboy. Like just weird stereotypes yeah, on like, why are what, we doing this? where your What's vocal cords lie. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But Stacy's got this alto voice that's just almost, almost like how I would want to sing in an indie rock band. I don't know how to describe it, but it just resonates with me deeply. Um, it's all a little overly honest in the best ways possible. Almost like this is a therapy album. Oh, wow. um, and it's just this, I don't know how to describe it. Do you ever feel nostalgic for like summer in San Diego back when we were in teenage years? Yeah, that's what this reminds me of. Of like being in our cars at night and the warmth of the summer like just kind of breezes. It's a a vibe. It's a vibe. Mm -hmm. That's what this EP sounds like. It's like a very comforting comforting sound. Very comforting. You feel like it's just... You're just there with them. Yeah, oh, that's how yeah. I yeah. like in the bedroom listening that. to that. Yeah, oh. and it, it, it's such a full experience. I, yeah, I just, and it's yeah. just like the entire EP just keeps on going. It's like there's no stops. Oh wow! And I think that's what's so cool about it is this is their debut. They just released their first single like back in February, and that's how I started to know like that's that was their beginning. And so to have this EP be just fucking phenomenal. I am so I in it to, to win it. They also have this really good ear for like um, hooks, like guitar hooks Ooh. and earwormy kind of sounds mm-hmm. that just kind of get stuck Suck. up in the oh brain. Oh god, my brain! Can't. I know. Yeah, which by the way, if I were a fish, fish has yeah. been stuck on in my loop. head on loop. I've been singing it to Gabe all week. All I say is hi, I'm an elf. If you can. <laughs> that's fair. Hi, I'm an elf. <laughs> When you caught me, you said, look, look at that, that elf. <laughs> Shimmering in, in the sun. sun. We're so sorry to have done this so to sorry. you. Now it's, gonna uh, uh, it's in everyone's head. <laughs> um, Best Friend is really an incredible duo. I'm super excited to see what comes from them. I literally love the entire EP. I think every song is in my favorites of uh, April. Um, but my favorite, favorite, favorites are Lemon Lime. Uh, love always came so easy for you and places. Ooh, that's the so, title. Places is my places favorite. is a love bop. always came so easy for you. Ooh. It'll get you in your feels, guys. In the best way possible. I have not listened. I'm going oh, to. Oh, you're gonna love it. I saw their me your next year hours though, and I love them already. I mean, they're so much fun. Another inboxer. Yeah. Yeah. J- yeah. J- yeah. Yeah. This is Sunchild and her EP Everything. Yes. I'm obsessed you with Sunchild. You are obsessed. I can't get enough. Oh. I think that, so Sunchild is Brooke Garwood, okay. um, a singer-songwriter, folk artist from Jacksonville, Florida, formerly known as Girl Pluto. 
never heard of them, but it's a little mm. bit of a sassier vibe. Mm-hmm. Still, like, got the acoustic vibe that yeah. Sunchild does. Um, it's just a little more upbeat. Okay. Her current sound is so calming and dreamy. Um, I just, I don't know what it is about it. But yeah. when I heard Sheep, which yeah. is, was one of her singles before this EP came out, I was instantly obsessed. I remember, I not remember, but I like, I've seen you add her to yes, many, many playlists, thing, which is like, that's when I know Ashley's into something. Yeah. Like I'm obsessed. Yeah. And I, I it's something about her voice and just. Like the lyrics, that song in particular describes the racing and anxious thoughts that prevent sleep. And I'm like, yeah, that's Fucking hell, I've been there, done that. Yeah. Um, the EP is about embracing everything the universe like throws at you, the good and the bad. Mm. I just think that she's one to watch. I think that she's an up and comer in the scene. And check her out. Hell My yes. favorite tracks are Sheep, Everything, and Favorite Kind of High. It's definitely a fiver EP. It's very just like calming and yeah, I love that. it's definitely like has that acoustic singer songwriter vibe. Mm-hmm. Like good for a nighttime wind down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. stunning. I'm Which obsessed. is also, I cannot find her on Apple Music. Oh. I don't know if she has her music on there, but I have looked for what feels like years. We did, um, maybe so we should DM her. I think we so. So if you're watching this girl, uh, can't find you on Apple Music. Weird. Yeah. Just it does not appear anywhere. Huh. Weird. I looked I looked for her EP title. I looked for everything. I don't know why. Okay, I'll check it out. Please do. Maybe it's under Girl Pluto still. Oh, oh, I didn't even think. Well, I didn't know, but yes, yeah, yeah. I'll look. I'll take a look. But anyways, anyway, yeah, Sun yeah. Child, I'm obsessed with you. Hell yeah, I'm. I have an inkling that on our next round of up and coming artists to watch, she'll be there. She'll be there. <laughs> So excited. My last um, full album is someone I totally missed, but has like 2 million Spotify listeners every month. Dreamer, uh, Isioma. Ooh, music discovery. I I don't know. Look at this. Oh. Look at this artist. Oh my gosh. But over 2 million listeners a month, and I'm like, where have I fucking been? Damn, Wow. And they just came out with an album called Princess Forever. I just put it on randomly, was not expecting much. And then I was like, oh, oh. The cover art is amazing. So dope. Yes. I think they're really, really cool. They remind me a lot of like um, Moses Sumney, a uh, lot of kind of that more um, experimentally kind of sound, but not in an um, unex- inaccessible way. Like it is still very listenable. Um, I think it's really cool. <laughs> Again, another Chicago baddie. Oh, damn. Where is everyone coming from? I mean, the Chicago music scene is pretty hype, I think. Right now, I feel like it's been really quiet for a long time. Ever since they got rid of Kanye Mm -hmm. and uh, Chance. Is Chance from there, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chance is. Yeah, I feel like everyone's just... The reason why I know that is because of the recent Ted Lasso episode, and he went to Chicago, and I saw Chance, and and Sean's like, at least they got Chance right on the board, because he's from Chicago. And I was like, okay, cool, Sean, thanks. Excuse me, every Anyway, sidebar. We love Ted Lasso. Love um, it. It's the best. Wholesome. The most wholesome. So fucking wholesome. Oh, God. But Every time an episode want, ends, I'm like... I know. like, totally <laughs> so nice. But I also... If Roy and Keely don't get back together... They're getting back together. I don't think they're getting back together. She had a mo. And then she's like, you know... I know. Anyways. <laughs> um, Dreamer Iso- Isioma. I'm going to say that's how you say her name. Uh, their name. Um... They're making this like all R&B music, which you can tell is really in my vibe right now, but also making it a little heavier, a little bit more dreamier. They're calling it Afrofuturism music, which oh, really reminds me that. of like Janelle Monet. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can tell they definitely take some form of um, uh, influence, inspo, inspo yeah. from them. Um, it feels galactic, intergalactic. It Ooh. feels spacey. Ooh. It just feels big. In a cool way that, like, I, I don't even know who this artist is, and I can't believe I've totally Gosh. missed the boat. Just, like, really cool art. Already third album. Yeah, and just experimentally cool. Yeah. Just really pushing boundaries yes. in music in the best ways possible. Yes. Um, making it accessible to, you know, smaller communities, making it accessible to just... 
the, the world. I love that. Um, without it being too aggressive. And a really, really cool um, story, I would just really uh, go Google. It's really fun to hear them talk about their music. Mm. It's really interesting. They just have a lot of really artistic ideas that I think is um, beautiful. And currently on season. tour. And currently on tour. <laughs> Bless her. Uh, my favorite songs off the album are Give Me a Chance and Love and Rage. Really, really fun. Take a chance on me. Me. If you need me, let me know. I'm gonna be around. That's no relation. I mean, I would love an ABBA cover. Oh my God. From anyone. From Just anyone. Do one. Okay, everyone. Buckle up, because I have got a whole fucking life story for you that the you're going to want to listen to. Hold on, to. I got it. Rearrange. <laughs> Tell me a story, mommy. Oh my gosh. Y'all. Okay, I did listen. Weirdly, I was listening to this album this morning. Oh, fuck. So it was really spoopy. All right, I'm talking about Abraham Alexander, his album, C. Sons. Sons. C. Sons. God bless. God bless. I am Beautiful. so happy that I found Abraham because I have never Same. heard Same. of him before. Same. And literally this album is like 100% my top for the year <gasps> for sure. It's wow. alternative soulful yep. vibes. Oh yeah. And um, I just have his life because the album has to do with his life. I believe it's his debut album. Yeah. And he has dope fucking people on it too. Yes. It's insane. Like, um, but definitely like his life inspired a lot of the music on the album. And I just think after I read about him, I'm mm -hmm. like, Oh man, I have to re-listen to the album because I just feel like I already was obsessed and I just think it's going to hit different. Yeah. Now that you know the kind of the song's story. So the story's the song? this is my, um, spark notes for, version of okay. his life. Tell me. Um, born in Greece, Ooh. the son of Nigerian immigrants. His family moved to Texas when he was 11. I'm so sorry. He never thought he'd get into music, but apparently had a random encounter with Leon Bridges, which set him on the path of music. I need more on this. I just got goosey. I need more on this because I don't I don't know how this happened, but I read that and I was like, okay. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. Leon, so our king? Leon. Yes, our king. Shortly after moving to the States, his mom was killed in a car accident by a drunk driver. Um, he states writing this record was cathartic in that I could express those feelings of losing his mom as a child. Mm. Also, there's influence in his music regarding his dad being abusive. Um, Heart of Gold was the first song he ever wrote and touches on this and the love his mother had for him. He was later adopted, which is also discussed in the album in the song titled Blood Under Bridge, which talked about how the saying blood is thicker than water doesn't really apply to him. His adoptive parents gave him life. Um, truly an incredible story of perseverance. Oh my God. Right? Like wow. insane. I um, want to give this poor man a fucking hug. I know. As I was writing this, I was like tearing up because what I was reading obviously goes more in depth, but it's just really, I mean, he has had such an intense life. Yeah. And to like get to this point is just honestly and crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And then hearing about all of this, like what I was saying, now I just want to kind of go back and re-listen. Yeah, now I do too. Because Thanks. it's really, <laughs> it's this a really heavy, and oh each song God. like has to do with different parts of like where he's been and like obviously singing these songs live for him is, has bit was hard, but now say. he's like, it's kind of nice that Cathartic. I can be so vulnerable and like sing them to people and let them know just like where I come from. And I bet it helps other people too who have gone through the same yeah. ish kind of things, yeah. you know, to like have someone who is so open and vulnerable about it because I feel like sometimes it's hard to discuss yes, totally. heavier subjects like that. Heavy subjects. Heavy, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a fiver for me. It is a beautiful Ten out of five. Album. It's mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. It is. And, um, yeah. What are your favorite songs off of it? Favorite songs are Blood Under the Bridge, Tears Run Dry, and Deja Vu, which has Mavis Staples as a feature. That one is a fucking bop. I know. The second so I saw good. Mavis, I was, I was like, like, we're going to love it. I was like, sir. We're going to love it. Sir. Um, Mavis? Yeah. My Mavis. queen? So yeah, that's just a quick spark notes. He's definitely an incredible person, and I'm just so happy that I found him. Yeah, I'm really excited to... I mean, as, as as I hope he gets more press and interviews and stuff like that, I'm really excited to hear more of his yeah. life story and maybe, you know, deep diving into it. I want to know the story about how he met Leon Bridges. For I know. I want to know more about this. Like, sir? how did this happen? Sir? And is happen? Leon the nicest baby angel ever? Tell me. I would think yes. I would think absolutely yes. Um, but yeah, Abraham Alexander. See, 
slash sons. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you, Miss Ma'am. Well, beautiful fucking picks from all of us, as per our usual. <laughs> uh, I'm really, really happy. We just get to, this is our dream to just be able to talk yes. shit about music and the world and pop culture. And I love it. It's great. We hope y'all love it too. Uh, we're, we're, we're going on. We're going forth. I was gonna say we're going on tour. We're going on tour. <laughs> Big announcement. Girls going on tour. Actually, I feel like we've been on tour with our thirty-five <laughs> listeners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, if Billie Eilish had eight and she became a superstar, seriously. There we go. That's the mentality I'm going into today. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Billie started at eight. Now look at our now arena at tours her. all around. Holy moly. Girls going on an arena tour. <laughs> True. Oh my God. Can you imagine? They're like, man, no. Oh, oh, oh yeah. She's a little rolly today. But thank you so much for joining us. We will be back next week on your screens. Uh, make sure you follow everything that we do. We have really cool content coming up for everyone. And just make sure you subscribe, like, Share the YouTube profile, people. We need share it. Share it. We need it. Uh, <laughs> we need we it. Needs it. <laughs> and just make sure if you guys want us to talk about a specific album, EP, single, anything like that, let us know whenever we post um, the uh, like the grid post on our Instagram for our podcast. If there's sp- something specific you would really like to hear from us, let yeah, let us know. Let us know. Our Discord is back up and running. If you want a link to that, go to our Instagram and you'll see it in our little link tree. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hopping, y'all. It's going to be hopping. We made it uber extra special for everyone this this round. And we really hope you'll join us because we're chit-chatting then there. We have a lot of cool playlists happening. We really want to do some more community-driven things. So if you've always just wanted to, um, talk, to about, talk to other people about music, talk to us about music, it's just a direct access to us. Instead of having to go through Instagram DMs, which we lose all the time because yeah, we, we get, get a lot. lot of DMs. We get a lot of them from you all. Um, it's a lot. So just make sure you go and say hey, meet us, hang out with us, give us recommendations. And we love you all so much. We will see you next week. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.